Vidges, man. All right. Good evening, everyone. Tuscaloosa City Council has now come to order. We're going we're to begin tonight's meeting with a prayer. And if you would, remain standing for our Pledge of Allegiance. Let's bow our heads, please. Dear God, bless our proceedings tonight. Give us the wisdom to know what is just and the strength to do what is right. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Approval of the minutes. Second. Moved and second to approve the minutes. Voting, Mr. Wilson. Yes. 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 Minutes stand approved. Proclamations and statements by <laughs> council. Do we have any council <laughs> statements tonight? Any agenda item comments by citizens? No, sir. Unfinished business. Clerk. This authorizes renewal of the agreement with the Tuscaloosa Housing Authority to provide and manage the tenant-based rental <coughs> assistance program under the 2016 and 2019 Home Investment Partnership Program. So move. Second. It's been moved and second. Voting, Mr. Lanier. Yes. 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 Resolutions adopted. Clerk. This orders demolition of the structure at 1500 McFarland Boulevard East. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Voting, Mr. I'm sorry. Excuse me. I'm sorry, Mr. Junkin. All right. <laughs> um, ready to go? Go ahead, Mr. Junkin. All right. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor, Council. This is for the condemnation of 1500 McFarland Boulevard East. Condemned November 22nd, 2022. The property has 41 housing code violations. The owner or representative has been contacted and is aware of this hearing. The owner is here to represent, I mean, excuse me, the owner's representative is here to represent the property. Okay. Any questions for Mr. Junkin? Barry, yes, sir. a couple, couple questions. And I, right. we talked about this a little bit pre council. When we looked at this 60 days ago, right? I know that, well, we passed 60 days, right? It's been 60 days to the day. Is that right? Just a little bit right? past it. A little bit past Just that. A couple of days. I know there were some things, and I, and I want Mr. McGuire to answer part of this too, but I know we talked about there were minimum things that we wanted to see done. I think the, we wanted the awning, whatever, taken off, and some different things like we talked about in pre-council. I know there's been a little bit of improvement toward that, but what is your stance kind of where we are right now? Yes, sir. It was, it was our understanding or our interpretation of the repairs to be more of a, of a repair instead of a, a patch, so to speak. And we were kind of hoping it would be a little bit more aesthetically pleasing than it is right now. My understanding, and, I, and I'm assuming that the guests are going to talk about this in a little bit that represent the owner, but there's a contract in place right now <laughs> to sell that property sometime in the month of May. Okay. And if that was the case, would you feel like that would be something we ought to look at doing is extending yes. this for 45 or 60 days or whatever to get through that due diligence? What, to get whatever that? the council recommends at that point. Okay. Yep. You, you're good. Okay. All right. If the owner's representative can come forward, please. If you would, give your name and address. Bill McGuire, RCI Contractors and Engineers of Tuscaloosa. Um, Valentine's Day, February 14th, um, I was here representing Mr. Wyatt. And at that time, I asked for 90 days to do some work on the building, and y'all granted me 60. Thank you very much. Um, the next day, uh, somebody sent me a link to Tuscaloosa Thread article where they they were either in this room dictating what I said or whatever, but they had it nailed down verbatim what I said. Um, and basically, they I, I said at that time that we would do we'd get a uh, demolition permit, do some limited demolition, um, board up the building clean out some of the fire damage and uh, whatever patches or repairs we did to secure the building, we would paint it white or in keeping with the rest of the building. And from the photos that you saw earlier, that's exactly what we did. And we had to take the canopy down and get it off state right away. So we did that. Um, and so I, I feel like I have done what I said I was going to do. If it was, wasn't interpreted correctly, then, then 
maybe I didn't do a good job of explaining that. Um, Mr. Harwood is here representing Mr. Wyatt from a real estate standpoint, and they actually have a contract in place, so I'd like for him to share that. Yes, you will give your name and address. Yes, I will. Richard Harwood, 13668 Sharps Lake Road, Northport, Alabama. Um, so we have a contract on this property with an out-of-state developer. Um, his intention, and he's met with the city, uh, Representative uh, Eric Thompson, some time ago when he placed a contract with us, his, um, his plan and desire at this time would be to scrape the building. Um, and he has plans to do a smaller footprint. Uh, in addition to that, he has um, in negotiations with Midtown to uh, pay them for a entrance on the Chipotle side. That way you'd have an entrance off of um, the 15th Street <coughs> access and then an exit off of McFarland. Um, our client's engaged. He has uh, spent money on surveys, uh, he's engaged TTL to come in and do some work for him. Um, as I said, he's a developer out of Georgia. Um, he showed Eric some developments they've done. He, he himself developed Oxford Gate in Knoxville, Alabama. They've uh, done quite a lot of developments in South Carolina and Georgia on grocery store chains and targets and that kind of thing. So this guy has been doing this around 25 years. Um, he's excited about the property. Um, he's worked um, diligently to try to get where he is today. Like uh, Mr. McGuire said, you know, timing has been um, a situation where we're, we're remedying the building because the city wants us to, but at the end of the day, his plan is to tear it down. So we've, we've tried to comply with the city's wishes, also knowing that at some point in time, that building will be gone. Okay. When do you go ahead? Well, when, when do you expect this building to be down? Well, our closing date is five thirty-one. So, sometime after that, when he would come to town, and he's he's negotiated with some people here in town um, that I can't say publicly who they are, but the city does about what what he thinks his best best suited use would be, and. Um, if, if, if it, I can show you some of his work, he does a really good job of development, and it would be a nice addition to the city of Tuscaloosa for that corner section onto Midtown. Midtown's agreeable and excited about the possibilities. So sometime after the closing, if he took possession, he would go right away and start pulling permits and doing work. So he's, he's, you know, the, you had one buyer, excuse me, my voice, you know, from Jefferson County, Shelby County, you know, and they, they backed out. Yeah, it was a vape um, shop. They won't put a vape shop, which yeah. wasn't. The and I think, I think he was, he was excited about the building, but then when he got in and started, built, Mr. McGuire was involved in that too. And once we started giving some construction costs, I don't think, I think he got a little sticker shock. Right. He may not have been able to get the financing wrapped up like he needed mm -hmm. to. Any other questions? Um, this buyer who's under contract is in their due diligence period. Their the due what? diligence period, he's, he's testing the waters yeah. out, having TTL do soil bores, either phase one, phase two, yeah. environmental studies, whatever they do, whatever he's asked them to do. I don't know what that is. But I think it's it's really important that the council understands that this is under contract, and if y'all have ever been in a, in a real estate contract, there are options for you to get out if you don't like the inspection, if you find some asbestos or whatever the case may be. So I don't I don't want you guys to think that this is a, this is a done deal. I don't I don't want to misrepresent that, but y'all know what real estate contracts are like. The point is is that now that it's looks better, I guess, it's getting some traction. I sent you a text just a minute ago. <clears throat> Did you see it? I, I saw where you were Finance meeting. Oh, yeah, that was earlier. I just sent you okay. one. Okay. Now, <clears throat> because I was, I was hearing conflicting reports over. I'm sorry. Who was buying it? Oh. 
Um, no. The answer to your question is no. Are you familiar with that scenario? A little bit, yeah. Do you mind speaking? Mr. This is Wilson, expert in the room. Mr. President, do you yes, sir. think the, the party under contract right here is a gentleman that owns a large development group from Marietta, Georgia, mm -hmm. and he doesn't have any ties to Alabama other than he loves sports. He comes over here for basketball, football, the weekend that I oh, showed him the property. Can you go to the microphone? Yeah. I'm sorry. The, the weekend I showed him the property, he had gone to four Alabama events, including volleyball and gymnastics. And when we got together, he, <clears throat> um, he actually bought the athletic A from Malmore Center and built his house around it. He loves Alabama sports. <laughs> his Sounds intention like is to start developing in, in Tuscaloosa to have a reason to come here. Okay. So this developer doesn't have any ownership in any properties in Alabama as of yet, but plans to have a few in Tuscaloosa. Okay. Any other questions? Mr. President, do you think it would be appropriate to give, put this aside for 60 days? Yeah. And then let this see where this goes? And I think so. Would you like to make the motion? I, I will make a motion to table for 60 days. Second. Moved and second, table for 60 days. This was a public hearing when it was introduced. Anyone here went wanting to speak for or against? <clears throat> Seeing none, voting Mr. Wilson the table for 60 days. Yes. 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 Table for 60 days. Thank you. Consent agenda, clerk. This approves items A through D on the consent agenda. Move adoption. Second. Been moved and second. Vote Mr. Lanier. Yes. 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 <coughs> yes. Yes. The consent agenda is adopted. Uh, on public hearings, clerk, do we need a vote, a motion to with? Uh, yeah, I'll read it into the record and then okay. we'll draw. Public hearings, clerk. This approves the gastro pub as a conditional use for grandstand in Tuscaloosa. Uh, move to withdraw. Second. Move and second to withdraw. Voting, Mr. Lanier. Yes. 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 Resolutions withdrawn. Resolution ordinances not of a general nature or permanent operation. Clerk. This approves a less than seven day special events retail license at the Fiji Island event on April 22nd. Um, do I hear a motion to withdraw? Yeah, motion to withdraw. I was double, ch I was double checking. <laughs> yeah. Moved and second. To withdraw, that uh, to well. withdraw. Voting Mr. Wilson. Yes. 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 Resolutions withdrawn, clerk. This approves a less than seven day special events retail license at the Delta Chi alumni event on April 29th. So moved. Second. Moved and <clears throat> second, Mr. Mills. Okay, Mayor and Council, this is ABC Alcohol Application 23-036 for 511 Jefferson Avenue, uh, Delta Chi alumni event, applying for special <coughs> retail events less than seven days. Um, my first picture shows, give you an overview picture of whether that, the actual property or the party is gonna be located at. This is a satellite view of it. Um, all necessary reports have been filed with the city clerk's office. Officer Branscombe will give this report, followed by the applicant to answer any questions you have. Officer Branscombe. Okay. Uh, good evening. This is our crime report for the for the area, 511 Jefferson oh. Avenue. Uh, next slide, please. So there, again, there's a map. And very small report uh, for this address, only one drug event and criminal mission. Okay. Any questions of Mr. Mills or Officer Branscombe? Okay. Thank you. Is the applicant here? If you would, please come forward and give your name and address. Randy Starner from R&R &R Cigars, 2703 6th Street, Tuscaloosa, 35401. Okay. Any questions? Thank you very much. Good luck. Voting, Mr. Lanier. Yes. 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 Special events, retail license, less than seven days approved. Good luck. Clerk. This authorizes an amphitheater in kind trade agreement with Hotel Indigo Tuscaloosa Downtown. So moved. Second. Moved and second. Voting, Mr. Wilson. Yes. 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 Resolutions adopted, Clerk. This authorizes Amendment 1 to the Professional Services Contract with Motorola Solutions Incorporated. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Voting Mr. Lanier. Yes. 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 
Resolution is adopted, Clerk. This authorizes the City of Tuscaloosa to make application to the Department of Homeland Security for a grant for targeted violence and terrorism prevention. So move. Second. Move and second by Mr. Wilson. Yes. 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 Resolution is adopted, Clerk. This authorizes execution of a lease with John E. Walker to lease land at the Tuscaloosa National Airport for agricultural use. So move. Second. Move and second by Mr. Lanier. Yes. 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 Resolution is adopted, Clerk. This will authorize a contract with FCC notification for Spectrum Manager Lease Ownership Disclosure Information and Spectrum Lease Agreement. Make a motion. Second. Move and second by Mr. Wilson. Yes. 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 Resolutions adopted, Clerk. This designates an official representative in regard to the DWSRF loan application. Motion. Second. Move and second by Mr. Lanier. Yes. 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 Resolutions adopted, Clerk. This designates an official representative in regard to the CWSRF loan application. So move. Second. It's been moved and second by Mr. Wilson. Yes. 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 Resolutions adopted, Clerk. This authorizes the Chief Financial Officer to draw drafts for the Downs Improvements Project property acquisitions. So move. Second. It's been moved and second. Voting, Mr. Lanier. Yes. <clears throat> yes. 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 Resolutions adopted, Clerk. This authorizes execution of an agreement with AT&T for conversion of underground utilities along Jack Warner Parkway between Greensboro Avenue and 21st Avenue. Motion. Second. Moved and second by Mr. Wilson. Yes. 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 Resolutions adopted, Clerk. This authorizes a disbursement from District 1 Improvements Funds for the Family Fun Day event at Palmore Park. Adopted. Second. Moved and second by Mr. Lanier. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I said yes. Yes. <laughs> Look at me. Um, I'm, 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 uh, uh, that'd be yes. Thank yes. you, sir. <laughs> yes, thank you. Who would be against Family Fun Day? Right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like Family Fun Days. <laughs> Look, I thought somebody else said it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see the attack ads now coming. <laughs> yeah. Coming in a year and a half. Long day. Tyner against family fun I days. I else did it with me. <laughs> Clark. This authorizes disbursement from District 2 improvements funds for the Central High School track team. Make a motion. Second. Move I see second. how quickly y'all did that. Voting <laughs> Mr. Wilson. Yes. 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 Resolutions adopted, Clark. This tentatively awards a public works contract to Lavender Incorporated. Move it option. Second. Move and second. Voting Mr. Lanier. Yes. 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 Resolutions adopted, Clerk. This authorizes the purchase of equipment from Graybar. So moved. Second. Moved and second by Mr. Wilson. Yes. 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 Resolutions adopted, Clerk. This authorizes the purchase of equipment from Stivers Ford Lincoln. So moved. Second. Moved and second by Mr. Lanier. Yes. 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 <laughs> Resolutions adopted, Clerk. This amends the resolution previously adopted on November 22nd, 2022, approving an application for a permit to construct a pier for commercial use. Make a motion to withdraw. Second. Move and second to withdraw. Voting, Mr. Wilson. Yes. 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 Resolutions withdrawn, Clerk. This authorizes Amendment 7 to the Fiscal Year 2023 General Fund Reserve for Future Improvements Fund Budget. Motion. Second. second. Move and second by Mr. Lanier. Yes. 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 Budgets amended. Ordinances and resolutions of a general nature or permanent operation for introduction. Clerk. This annex is approximately 16.2 acres located at 6444 Sanders Ferry Road to the corporate limits of the city of Tuscaloosa. So moved. Second. It's been moved and second. Voting Mr. Wilson. Yes. 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 We hear a call for unanimous consent. So moved. Second. Moved and second for unanimous consent. Voting Mr. Lanier. Yes. 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 And Welcome to District 1. Is adopted. <laughs> Auditing account. This authorizes the payment of bills. Yeah. Wow, Kip. Pay Kip's bills. Kip, Jeez. you got I'm a big a deal today. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Baby Voting Mr. Kids. Wilson. Yes. 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 Bills are paid. Try to slow it down a little bit, Mr. Turner. <laughs> <laughs> citizens' comments and other communications. Any citizens wish to address their city council tonight?
you wouldn't mind, please give your name and address, and each citizen will have five minutes to address their council member. Name and address, yes, ma'am. Okay, all right. Well, good afternoon, well, good evening, everyone. My name is Kiosha Quarles. I live at um, 5001 Cypress Creek Avenue East, 35405. Um, and I'm here to speak on behalf of 1225 and explain what it means to me, what the establishment means to me. So to me, 1225 means a safe and inclusive establishment for us to fellowship at. Yes, it has been said that the capacity of the sports bar oftentimes comes from the minority communities. However, that is not entirely true. 1225 attracts crowds from college age and beyond, and many families go there to eat and have fun too. Patrons look forward to what the weekly lineup will have in store each week from karaoke, and tacos on Tuesdays, and bingo and a dollar wings on Wednesdays, all the way to brunch on Sundays. Bingo is what I always look forward to every single week because it has allowed me to get over that Wednesday hump, unplug for a little bit with my closest friends, and finish out the week strong. Not to mention it has allowed me to make new connections as well. The atmosphere is always so welcoming and relaxed, and it has never changed since 1225 opened its doors in 2020. I know you're probably wondering how I know what it was like in 2020. Well, in the summer of 2020, yes, during the pandemic, I decided to, to venture outside and try something new. And 1225 popped up on my Yelp when I searched for restaurants with outside seating. So I went and sat outside and enjoyed some much needed fresh air and a delicious meal. The food was good and I told myself that I'll have to come back and try something else on the menu. So I did and I always brought a new friend with me to sit outside and chat and eat some really good food. Great food always comes with great service. 1225's wait staff is always so attentive and friendly. With them being new in Tuscaloosa in 2020 and my first um, few excursions being by myself, some of the waitresses and I were able to chat and get to know each other. And eventually I met Mr. J, the owner. He was extremely kind and generous and he had great enthusiasm for ensuring that people enjoy their time at his establishment and still does do that every single time. With that, with that said, 1225 and its employees know how to build genuine, mean, meaningful relationships with its customers and remember their faces when they return again. 1225 means equal access and opportunities are given, are given to everyone, all students, all organizations, literally everyone, through a variety of avenues such as hosting events like percentage nights for organizations, teacher appreciation events, participating in game nights, and so forth and so on. 1225 means to me, a safe place with a positive atmosphere where I can go after work, sit and grab a bite to eat and work on my assignments for school. I can say this without access to 1225 from 2020 to 2021, I would not have survived being a full-time student obtaining my master's degree while working full-time during a pandemic. I have always been able to focus better with music in the background. In conclusion, 1225 means a lot of things to me. The most important thing is that my safety and security while inside have always been a top priority. It means being able to fellowship and connect with more people than I would any other place. It means a friendly and inviting environment with a great atmosphere. 1225 means that I can host an event for my colleagues and they feel comfortable enough to come to the strip and have a great time singing karaoke, playing bingo, participating in game night, and watching the tide roll or the Celtics play in the playoffs. To me, 1225 is like, like we're always at a good Southern family reunion in a safe place, fellowshipping, eating good, dancing, and meeting new cousins, all while trying to determine when we are going to meet up again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address the council tonight? Yes, ma'am, please. If you would, give your name and address. Hey, Council, Mayor, how y'all doing today? How are you doing? Good, Good afternoon. <laughs> Good evening. My name is Jocelyn Hurst. I live at 9940 Jones Road, Northport, Alabama, 35473. So me being a doctoral student in public administration, public policy, stuff is very stressful <laughs> all the time, <laughs> and also being a therapist. So um, going to 1225 is very safe to me. Safety has always been a priority to me being a native here in Tuscaloosa. So 1225 has always been that place for a safe haven for me. So to hear the news and what's going on, it was very disrupting to me. So I know I had to advocate in regards to 1225. 
1225 is just a safe space for me to hang with me and my friends and also be able to do my schoolwork as well. Um, and I just would thoroughly appreciate it. I love 1225. I just wish that I wanted to stay here as long as possible as well. I, that's all I got to say. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address the council? Thank you. If you would, give your name and address. Um, my name is Austin Ladson. Um, I live at 1229 Canterbury Road, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, 35405. Um, I wanted to speak on behalf of 1225 just to express how much it actually means to me um, as somebody that's lived in Tuscaloosa for over, well, really the majority of my life. Um, seeing 1225 come in has had a great impact on the community, especially as a college student and recent graduate of the University of Alabama. You know, as a student at, at Bama, you know, we look for somewhere where we can kind of just unwind and not have to worry about, you know, looking over our shoulder or like incidents occurring. You know, we can just enjoy ourselves and enjoy our friends and just the general um, college community in general. And so um, with that, 1225 actually provides that and we know that we can go there um, throughout the entire week, like daily. There's always something going on where we can come and we can just meet with friends and, you know, really just feel safe and not have to worry about um, being judged by anybody or being in danger or anything of that sort. Um, there have been very few black-owned establishments that have uh, existed in Tuscaloosa, and they've had lifespans from what I've seen of like two to three years or so on and so forth. And we want to just advocate on behalf of 1225 to keep it here. Because before 1225, I think we've gone maybe one or two years where there was nothing really for us to really do anything other than galettes or bear trap or um, rounders or, you know, all these other places. But to have something that's really for us and for the community and for the people, that's something we want to protect and that's something we want to keep. Um, because, again, it provides safety and a place for us to really just unwind and be ourselves. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address city council? you would, please give your name and address. Uh, good evening. My name is Erin Massey, and my address is 1805 8th Avenue, um, apartment 124, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. When I first uh, began my college uh, here at Tuscaloosa, I was excited to see what life at the University of Alabama had to offer. Um, I quickly came to the realization that students that look like me have to leave the safety of the campus in order to find establishments that hosted entertainment and other extracurricular activities we were used to. The city of Tuscaloosa and our very own university has relentlessly fought to contain uh, black residents and students within the city's West End. It's no secret that this school was founded with the idea that black students would never enter its threshold. If the opposite were true, George Wallace would just be another name <coughs> carved into some plaque or stone to, uh, to commemorate his time at the university. If the opposite were true, there would not have been a need for eight of the divine nine sororities and fraternities to be chartered on this campus, along with other black non-Greek organizations. If the opposite were true, I would not be in front of you all today continuing the fight against discrimination. Although, um, Oh, sorry. In uh, recent years, there's been a running joke that the University of Alabama is an illegitimate school since all we're known for nationally um, is our football ranking and our party culture. Um, although uh, myself, along with other students that attend the university at the moment, have the grades and coursework to prove that this is, in fact, a real school, we can't really say much in defense of our reputation of being a party school. Uh, long lines and packed bars are the norm on Friday and Saturday nights, and 1225 has been no exception to that. I can count how many times I've been to the bars on the Strip, but I can tell you that I've never been asked by TPD for my ID in the Boom Boom Room of Rounders, nor have I been told I'm not allowed to join the line for Wine Wednesday when it has stretched well past the region's ATM. Ironically, both of these things have happened at one place, and that is 1225. Diversity and inclusion should span past the field in Bryant-Denny Stadium, and that's what Mr. J offers black students through his establishment. It's clear to all that 1225 is the only bar on the strip being publicly targeted and at risk to be shut down. 
It's time for the city to accept the fact that Jim Crow is over and black businesses, students, and residents are here, vital parts of the community, and will remain here. Anyone else wish to address their city council? <coughs> if you would, please give your name and address. Hi, my name is Ryan Troutman, 1100 Hargrove Road East, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, 35405. So as I said, again, my name is Ryan. I'm a current senior at the University of Alabama. During my time at the Capstone, I've had the opportunity to partake in a multitude of organizations, with one of my favorites being my work done as a student ambassador. I've talked to prospective students of all interests, ages, colors, and backgrounds, with the only common factor being the students who just so happen to look like me. It is always with a quiet tug or whisper that I am pulled aside by a wide-eyed athletic recruit, high schooler, or even parent, and I'm asked what it's really like to be a black student at UA. In my experience, to really be a black student in Tuscaloosa is to have your friends rush into your dorm at night, terrified because they had just been shot with pellets and called racial slurs while walking home from the dining hall. To really be a black student in Tuscaloosa is to be called racial slurs crossing the street, in broad daylight walking to a party. To really be a black student in Tuscaloosa is to be berated and threatened, to be given a ticket by the police as you walk down the street to pass 1225 because you are black and they assume you to be standing in line or in their words, loitering. A swift turn to the officer's left would clearly show the true loiterers, white students who scream and yell as they drunkenly jump off the railings of the CVS just across the street. What's worse is to walk into a thick cloud of pepper spray when you are trying to exit 1225 because rowdy police officers say that the minors leaving the bar are not leaving quick enough. To check online and see students make anonymous racial comments about my attendance in places like 1225, where the admission is 12 bananas, says one commenter. Perhaps a peer of mine, someone in my group project, I'll never know. What's worse is knowing simply how unfair this is to be. I can confidently say that I have never in my entire four years at the university received the poor treatment and blatant discrimination as I have as a patron at 1225. 1225's establishment has provided me a safe place on campus, a place where I can be surrounded by a diverse range of students and know that cultures of all kinds will be supported there. It is a place where my sorority has chosen to host several events, where we've been able to raise money for fundraising and have even had the pleasure of receiving donations from the establishment itself. Mr. J has personally been like a father figure to me and has given me business advice and had lengthy conversation about his origin as a business owner. 1225 is more than another bar on the strip. It's a clear mark of defiance against those who anonymously say no to spaces where people of all races and backgrounds can find support and fellowship. To see where the restrictions moved against 1225 is truly saddening me and proved to me what I believe to be the words and actions of few are clearly that of many. Saddening but not surprising, blatant and discriminatory, and that is what it's really like to be black in Tuscaloosa. Thank you. Anyone else wish to address the city council? Please give your name and address. Hi, my name is Madison Carmouche. I'm a senior. My address is 101 Helen Keller Boulevard, um, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, 35404. Um, I'm a senior at the University of Alabama. I began going to the University of Alabama in 2019 when 1225 was not a bar at first, but during my freshman year of college, 1225 opened and it felt like somewhere where me and my friends could go and really feel accepted and like we were able to have a good time somewhere near to campus. It seems like when black students are together anywhere near campus that it begins to cause a problem, whether that's with other students or with uh, law enforcement. But I do believe that 1225 has done their job in making <coughs> sure that the black students that do come to 1225 feel safe and welcomed. Um, like she said, um, it, at times after a weekend of large partying where there's a large presence of black students, there have been comments made on anonymous websites about EBT being used for admission, um, bananas being used for admission, um, things that just are not appropriate, but because we are black students on a predominantly white campus, those things are allowed to be said because who's gonna, who's gonna say anything else, you know? Um, but I just feel like Mr. J has done an amazing job at making sure that the black students that come through 1225 feel supported, not only as 
a patron of 1225. But like she said, as a mentor, Mr. J is a businessman and he has been able to help me um, um, to develop my skills in business as well as with those fundraisers that she talked about. I was the one mainly in coordination with him uh, planning those events for our sorority, which is a black Greek letter organization at the University of Alabama, the Theta Sigma chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Um, but 1225, you can see that when there's a large presence of black students outside of 1225, that a lot of the times people are maybe disheveled. Uh, I've seen people as on a game day, I've been at 1225 waiting to be pre-banded because Mr. J has done his part in trying to um, break down the crowds, um, making sure that lines are not too long. Um, so he started doing pre-banding where students could come earlier in the day to get their band to make sure that they are um, able to be in the bar. And uh, I've seen people see that there's a line of black people coming out of this particular uh, establishment and they will look up at what it is and shake their head or, or look in disgust. And, and I just feel like it's 2023 and things like that should not still be happening. We need to all be working together to make sure that our black students at the University of Alabama felt wanted and respected on this campus and not that they have to go to the west end of the city just to have a drink. Um, if we go to the university, we should be able to be on our campus and enjoy our facilities. Um, like someone said, 1225 is like one of the only black establishments, if not the only black establishment on the strip. So the fact that the Patrons that go there are also black, shouldn't be much of a shocker, but it seems to be an issue a lot of the times, even though it seems like there are only about two days out of the week that black students do get to go to 1225 without those comments of bananas and EBT being made. But I just wanted to um, come up here and say my support for 1225 and hope that we can all come together to make a change so that black students can feel heard and respected in Tuscaloosa and so that we can continue to um, diversify the university. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, I want to say one thing. I've got a seven o'clock place. I've got to be at seven. So I will watch the rest of this on television to see the rest of your comments, but please don't think I'm being disrespectful by having to leave early, but I have a commitment at seven that I've got to, I've got to leave now to be there on time. Thank you all for coming. If you wouldn't mind, please give your name and address. Okay. Hello, everyone. My name is Cameron Smith, and I live at 1151 10th Avenue, Tuscaloosa, Alabama, 35401. The address is a little funny because it is our building, Tutwiler, our beautiful new Tutwiler Hall, <laughs> where I'm currently an RA. I'm a senior, and I have enjoyed my four years at the university. As an out-of-state student, I would like to say that immediately 1225 is my safe space. I'm not the person who goes out. In fact, this year was my first year really going out, and I never felt any type of way as far as unsafe or uneasy or anything like that. And I know that this, this community supports having an easy community for everyone to have fun in, okay? Um, on campus, I've held many roles, including being the former president of my amazing sorority. And I would like to say, as we spoke on how Mr. J allowed us to um, have many events at um, his establishment, those events have fed into um, us being able to fundraise, fundraise and bring notice to our sorority so that we could have bigger events um, so that the community could get involved. That's where I see the positives in everything his establishment has done. As somebody who has to, had to work in leadership, I look forward to those safe spaces where on campus I am the minor, minority and I feel like the only one, but at 1225 I know I'm not the only one. In fact, I know that the owner is someone who looks like me and I look forward to that every time I go. And it's more than just going out. 1225 has offered many opportunities for students to get brunch, watch games, whatever it is students want to do, 1225 is that place. Um, and it honestly doesn't even matter what you look like, which is what I could appreciate all the time. 
There's been times where I could say, no, I have never been to Bear Trap. Why? Because I felt like I would be the only one. And being stared at because you're the only one is not a great feeling all the time. Granted, the school has taught me in the four years that I've been here, it's okay, and I've gotten used to it, but other students sometimes can't get acclimated to that. But it's okay because they have a safe space. And I know I've said safe space multiple times, and I know y'all have heard it multiple times, but I'd like to advocate for my safe space, and I'd like to advocate that it stays here. And that's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Anyone you. else wish to address their city council tonight? Um, I know we have many people here. If you please come forward. If I know all of you may, uh, you may all want to speak. You may not want to speak. But if you're here for 1225, would you mind standing so we could, could see you here tonight? All right. Thank you very much for coming and being here tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Sir, if you wouldn't mind, please give your name and address. Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Jaron Gates. I live at 1100 Harborough Road. Apartment 2633-35405. Excuse my appearance, I just got off work, but I had to make it here for this. So uh, I've come here today to speak on behalf of 1225 also, in a way of they have been a pioneer for black business in Tuscaloosa. In my eyes, I'm a young uh, black businessman. I have a job, work nine to five. I also have a side business. Uh, they've also taught me a lot of just how to carry myself and how to present my business and how to really just go about working with you guys. And uh, I know that there have been a lot of discrepancies against 1225, but we haven't really seen any discrepancies against any other bar on the strip. And uh, to see that and to know what people are saying about the owner, about the patrons, about black students in general, and black citizens, it kind of hurts my heart. I'm not from here, I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, but as being a past student, uh, I wouldn't want to see that because I, I promote uh, coming to Tuscaloosa and being a student here at the university or being a student here at Shelton or Stillman, anywhere. I promote the whole city to actually come here and it's actually going to be nice to experience for you. Uh, but I haven't experienced that here in my, in my years here. Uh, it's always been uh, either whether it's a racial profile or whether it's um, I don't look how someone else should, I, I just... I don't understand it. I feel like as a citizen of Tuscaloosa, we should all be accepted. And if we love the city, the city should love us back. So thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? If you could, please give your name and address. My name is Kenneth Hall. And my address is 1100 Hargrove Road East. And to hear the situation the news is going on with 1225 is truly disheartening because 1225 was really the only place on the strip, really on campus, that embraced <laughs> diversity and a minority culture because within me and my fraternity brothers, we host event events there and we go there all the time. And they really are open and give a family feel to minority students. And that's not really very common at the University of Alabama. So it's really upset to see what's going on with 1225 and the things people say about 1225. Mr. Jay has been a great owner. He's helped us learn how to conduct business as well as conducting business a fair and a correct way with us and also being very generous with profits and everything like that. And it's some place that we hope that keeps going. We hope that keeps thriving and flourishing. And that's all I'm going to say about 1225. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone <clears throat> else wish to address city council? And as the next speaker comes forward, uh, beginning after this speaker, we will move to three minutes per speaker on 1225. Please, if you would, give your name and address. Uh, good evening. I'm Gabriel Allman. Uh, I live at 1100 Hargrove Road, East Tuscaloosa, Alabama. And um, speaking on this situation, uh, I just have to echo on what everybody else has said. Uh, every time I went into 1225, I've had a nice experience, and uh, I've been, uh, we've had events with my fraternity brothers here. And as well, I have a relatively diverse friend group, and that's one of the only places that we can <laughs> all come together and meet up at. Uh, I've made a ton of friends there, as well as met old friends and reconnected with them. Um, it's kind of disheartening to hear about the situation because honestly, I felt safe every time I've been in 1225. Um, and uh, me, uh, I'm, a, I'm not from here as well. I'm from Birmingham, Alabama, and so like, and uh, not necessarily the best part. So it's like, um, I know what true 
like, would really like to have a rough situation going on. And every time I've been out there, I haven't really seen anything that escalated terribly. Uh, I just wish that we could keep it going. I'm a junior here, so I would like to see it stick around for my senior year and uh, beyond. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anyone else? If you would, please give your name and address. Hello, my name is David Jefferson. Uh, I live at 404 26 Avenue East. And um, I'm just here to say, um, I'm not here. Like, I'm gonna keep go straight to the point. Uh, if I go out anywhere, um, I'm a true advocate on watching where I go because of where I'm from. And 1225 is, is, is like the only place that I'm comfortable like going. Can't lie. Um, just the environment. Just the people, that, like the type of people that be in there as well. I connect with people. Um, Mr. J himself, I've done business with him with my fraternity as well, and he's been nothing but but helping. And he always he's always looking to help and and instilling us. And I just I'm not even a talkative person. I don't like talking, and I, coming up here is kind of a stretch as well. But like I just felt the need to come up here and really. Just explain how like this is kind of yeah disheartening. Like I can't believe like something like this is happening to such a great business. And I just hope that whatever's going on, um, we can all come to an agreement on something to get it back flowing how how it's been going. Um, I'm really, really, really hope that you guys whatever whatever can be done, it gets done. It gets <coughs> better. That's all I got to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? If you would, please give your name and address. Hey, how y'all doing? My name is Jatarius Taylor. It's at 1100 Hargrove Road East, apartment 2633. Um, I really just want to speak on, you know, 1225, of course. Uh, just like a lot of them have been saying, uh, the safety of 1225 <clears throat> is they take it very seriously at 1225 when it comes to the black community, really anyone. Mr. J pushes, you know, diversity, making sure everyone in the building is like, okay. I've done a few events at 1225. He's always trying to push diversity, diversity, make sure everybody's included. Um, you know, I just wish that everything could get back on track um, with capacity and just making us feel included because I feel like I've been here for a few years We've never really had equal treatment. And I feel like with 1225, we actually have that. Thank, Thank you, sir. You. Thank you. Anyone else? If you would, please give your name and address. Good evening. Good evening. My name Good is evening. Sabria Thomas, and I currently reside at uh, 680 6th Avenue Northeast, Tuscaloosa, Alabama. I do not wish to come up here and sound like a broken record, but to be the voice of people that look just like myself. I also would like to note that if there are approximately 4,300 black students here as the minority, there are over 28,000 white students here as the majority who rush the strip every weekend. So I don't understand how 1225 is the only establishment under this close of scrutiny. I've seen so many belligerent acts from people of the majority on the strip and the, t the tolerance and the difference is tremendous. Um, I also would like to add that threatening to close 1225 also takes away a great influence. <clears throat> Mr. J it has a great impact on us, and he does a lot for us. Um, we also need that, too. We need to see that so we can feel like we can thrive in the environment as such. And that's all I have to say. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? I don't see anyone else. Um, anyone else want to address city council tonight that's non 1225? Okay. Um, Mr. Holmes. <clears throat> council members, as you are aware, there is litigation ongoing between the city and 1225. I know many of you may feel compelled to address uh, some of the heartfelt comments made here tonight. It would be my advice to you not to. 
Council have any comments? Thank you all for coming tonight. <laughs> Subject to the exercise of mayoral veto and ordinances of general nature or permanent operation, all applicable departments hereby order to otherwise implement council policy this day enacted to your motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. second. Moved and second to adjourn. Voting, Mr. Lanier? Yes. 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 Meetings adjourned.